Hello and welcome to our service of morning prayer. Today we are focusing our thoughts on the importance of justice in the world. Later, Amanda will be talking to us about the International Justice Mission. She will be sharing some insights of some of its work and showing how, with their commitment to justice, people's lives are turned round for good. But now let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are free to share this time together, to learn more about you and be encouraged to live for you each day. As we remember your great love for us, may we do our part to share that love with people across the world. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. In a moment, we will have our first song, which is Jesus Christ is Waiting, Waiting in the Streets. Then Ken will read from the Old Testament and Amanda will speak to us. Linda will then lead us in, in prayers. The reading is taken from 1 Samuel 17. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits in a span. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I am able to overcome him and kill him, you will become our sub subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let me us fight each other. 
on hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Now David was the son of an Ephratite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons, and in Saul's time he was very old. Jesse's three oldest sons had followed Saul to the war. David was the youngest, went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. He has been a warrior since his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the field, I went after it, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by the hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic and put a coat of armour on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around. I cannot go out like this because I am not used to them. So he took them off, and he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the stream and put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag. With his sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield-bearer in front of him, kept clumbing closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. And David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by the sword or the spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and hit the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell down to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, before I start, I just wanted to say a big thank you to St Mary's Church, uh, which has supported International Justice Mission over the last couple of years as one of their three nominated charities of the year. I'm very proud to be part of a church community that, in the words of Isaiah, seeks justice, defends the oppressed, takes up the cause of the fatherless and pleads the case of the widow. So today is Freedom Sunday, a day when we focus on the work of justice being done around the world through IJM. IJM is no stranger to a broken and fallen world. Day in and day out, they come face to face with the most heinous evil, from bonded labour slavery, to human trafficking, to violence against women and children, to the online sexual exploitation of children. IGM's mission is to protect people in poverty from violence 
by partnering with local authorities to bring people to safety, hold perpetrators accounts, accountable and help strengthen public justice systems. Their vision is to protect half a billion people from violent injustice by 2030. Currently, five billion people, five billion children, women and men, all made in the image of God, live outside the protection of the law. This is called the justice gap, where people in poverty all around the world are uniquely vulnerable to everyday violence, which is as much of a daily threat as homelessness, hunger and disease. This is the daily reality of people IGM serves. It's the daily reality of Kim. Kim was born and raised in the suburbs of Manila. She lived with her mum and dad and five siblings. They could barely make ends meet and her parents were struggling to afford an education for her siblings. The age of 12, Kim met AJ, a man who offered to provide her with paid work and all her living necessities if she would move with him into the city. He offered to provide money for her siblings' educations and she and her parents agreed. Kim moved with AJ to Manila and was well provided for. At first things were good. She was treated kindly and lived comfortably. It wasn't long, however, before AJ approached Kim and took a nude photo of her. Gradually, the abuse grew. AJ would take abusive photos and videos of Kim, which she would then share on the internet for paedophiles to view. AJ eventually began to take Kim to hotel rooms to meet foreign customers where she would be raped. Kim began to lose all hope as she endured this unimaginable pain for three years. She recalls the abuse and her fear of AJ, saying, it was like he had a total grasp on me and it was so difficult to break away. After three years, Kim experienced the unimaginable. AJ took her, as usual, to a hotel room to meet another customer. As she entered the room, Kim was met by the police. IJM had been working with local law enforcement to track down AJ. Kim was afraid that she was being arrested, but was quickly assured that she wasn't in trouble, that they were there to help her. Police arrested AJ and Kim was taken into care. It was here that she learned to hope again. She developed a strong faith in God and spent a lot of time teaching others about how to avoid situations like her own. Today, she is in secondary school and continues to encourage survivors like herself to continue to fight for justice alongside her. Kim was vulnerable because of poverty, but she was taken advantage of by violent, greedy people who abused her. Slavery and oppressive violence exist because desperately vulnerable people meet horribly violent, greedy people who think that they can get away with it. It's a bit like a giant terrorizing the population, spreading fear and overwhelming them. And this brings us to our Bible passage today, the, the story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. The giant Goliath terrorized the people of Israel and the Israelite army in particular and they were afraid, hiding in their tents. No one wanted to go out to meet him. David was just a child, too young to be in the army, but he was sent by his father to visit his brothers on the front line. David was totally inadequate to take on Goliath, but he was the only one willing to fight. This story has been massively important for so many people over so many centuries, because all of us face giants in our lives. Giants in our own minds and hearts, speaking lies, putting us down, or giants in the world, people treating us badly, debt problems, relationships that are broken down, daunting circumstances. We all face giants, and IJM faces the giant of slavery because they want to see that giant topple over the next decade, and they know that it is possible. Slavery is a huge giant. It is a $150 billion a year industry controlling over 40 million people, people like Kim. And just like in the story of David and Goliath, the first thing we learn is that we alone are inadequate. The task is too great. The giant is too big. We often feel like that about giants in our own lives. How are we going to come out of our tents and face them? 
However, this story tells us that however inadequate we may feel, God is more powerful than the giant. And there is a way that we can fight. There are three things that this story can teach us about how we can fight the giants of slavery in the world or the giants we face in our own lives. Firstly, David had to look back to look forward. David in the story knows God is with him because God has been with him in the past. There is an old saying which says, do not doubt in the dark what you knew in the light. Even though David was a child facing an enormous giant, he remembered better days. He remembered when he was tending his father's sheep and protecting them from the wild animals. He remembered God being with him and he knew that God was the same God today as then. The first thing this story tells us is look back. Look back to when God has worked in our lives, when there has been breakthrough. Look back through the Bible and the promises where God says over and over, I will never leave you or forsake you. Where he says, I will always give wisdom to those who ask. The IJM team practices looking back even in the darkest moments, celebrating the days which, when there was breakthrough. They celebrate the days when a little girl was rescued from a brothel when no one thought it was possible. The days when a violent criminal who was very well connected and utterly corrupt was actually held to account and sent to prison. IGM looks back to see where God has worked, to remember and rejoice. Secondly, David had to wear his armour. David's taken to Saul and Saul thinks, what have I got to lose? And sends David off to fight. But he wants to help, so he gives David his own armour. As the king, Saul's armour was top quality, the absolute best the world had to offer. We read that David tried on Saul's armour, but it was hopeless. It simply would not fit. One of the things we all must learn in fighting giants is not to put on Saul's armour. Not to simply do what everyone else does, or the best that worldly wisdom says. We must learn to go to the Lord and say, what's the plan for me in this situation? Which leads us to the third thing that I want to draw out. David got God's plan. God's plan fitted David and it fitted the situation. Often when we face giants, we end up following a self-help book, or the advice of our friends, or something that worked for someone else. Whilst there may not be anything wrong with these, we must check with God that it's his plan for us in this situation. We must wait and listen to hear God's plan for us. And God's plan for David involved five stones. There are five stones, five ways in which IJM fights against the giant of slavery and violent oppression every day. Firstly, persistent prayer. If we're going to knock on the doors of sweatshops and brothels, we need to first knock on the doors of heaven to ask for protection and power for investigators and lawyers, social workers and activists. Every one of IJM's 1100 staff start every day in personal prayer, bringing the day into God's presence and God into the day, because they know that alone they are inadequate, that they need the resources of heaven to slay this giant. Then later in the day, they gather in local teams and pray together for the needs of the day, for rescues, court cases, meetings and speaking engagements, for information that's needed. Persistent prayer is at the heart of what IGM do does. The second stone is relentlessly showing up. In this story, the army of Israel was hiding in its tents. I wonder how true that is of, it is of us. When we face giants in our lives, the temptation is to hide, to ignore it by watching endless TV or scrolling through social media. Maybe sometimes we do anything but face up to the problem. One of the things IJM has had to learn is to relentlessly show up in the places where people are being held in slavery. They have to show up even if that means confronting violent, greedy people. They have to show up even if it's into the middle of heartbreaking situations where the enemy has tried to snuff out life. The third stone is diligent hard work. The work of justice is slow and it's hard. It depends on research, on extensive investigations 
on good preparation. These vulnerable and abused children deserve our very best. And so IGMs strive for excellence in all they do. Isn't this true also for any giant we face? If we face a mountain of debt, don't we have to do the hard work of thinking through our finances and making tough decisions? Fourthly, a committed team. The Christian faith is not a solo sport. It's a team game. And that's never truer than we're facing down giants in our lives and in the world. We must rejoice in our team life together. The IGM team has found this to be absolutely essential. Praying for each other, sharing stories, burdens and joys. When we are facing giants, we need a team around us. We need people that we can trust who will be with us in it and through it. A committed team. And the fifth and final stone is joy. Chase joy. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's not our gritty determination. It's not our sense of duty. It's not our courage. It's our joy in our Lord. Even though the IGM team faces heartbreaking stories, situations that make them afraid, in conditions that show that they alone are inadequate for the task, they relentlessly celebrate. They celebrate the good days. They celebrate the good people. They celebrate the goodness of God. Chase joy. Hebrews 13, 15 says that we are to continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. That means that even when we don't feel like it, when we don't feel like celebrating, that's when we celebrate. When everything looks dark, that's when we strain to the light. When everything is overwhelming, that's when we declare the praises of our God and we remember him in whom we have the victory. So where does that leave us today? What can we do in response to what we've just heard? William Wilberforce said there were three things that were needed to defeat the giant of slavery. Firstly, awareness. I think in recent years, there has been a greater awareness in our society of the existence of slavery, although I suspect there is still some level of ignorance to its extent and prevalence. Perhaps the next step could be to find out how slavery affects our lives personally, in the food that we eat, in the clothes that we wear. You can find out more on our website or follow IJM UK on social media and pass it on. Start talking about this giant in the world that is terrorising vulnerable people. The second thing Wilberforce called for was money. The fight against this giant needs to be financed. Investigators who go undercover into brothels and sweatshops to gather evidence need employing. Lawyers who work on the documents that survivors need in order to resume a normal life, who build evidence that will go through a court of law. Social workers and counsellors who spend time trying to unlock a young girl's horribly abused heart. These all cost money. By becoming a freedom partner, you can help in this work of justice by funding more rescue operations and long-term therapy to help IGM teams around the world engage with more churches and governments and train more police and continue the work of strengthening local justice systems. And thirdly, Wilberforce asked that we pray. We believe that it is only in God's strength and by his grace that we can ever truly fight the giant of slavery. We have a team of prayer warriors who are committed to praying for an end to slavery. Team is so important in this battle. So if you would like to be part of the IJM team by praying, by sharing the stories of what is going on in our world and sharing their financial burdens, IJM would be honoured to be in team with you. Please visit our website at ijmuk.org. Thank you very much. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the International Justice Mission and the analogy of David and Goliath. IJM may be small, but they are achieving great things. As Amanda has highlighted, this aspect of their work, we pray specifically against the online abuse of children. Lord, we are horrified and shrink from even thinking 
about such things. But let us gird ourselves with the armour of God and pray against this diabolical practice. Lord Jesus, in your name, we bind the evil spirits behind child abuse and loose your healing in the children so damaged by it. We also pray that you would convict the hearts of the perpetrators. We thank you that the IGM works with governments, law enforcers, companies and NGOs to strengthen the means to disrupt and prevent online abuse. Amen. We pray for wisdom and protection for the IGM teams as they support authorities to, to aid women and children who have suffered abuse and violence. We pray for strength, energy and rest for them. We pray for the IJM training of volunteers to help with free legal representation for victims and or for victims in many countries and for victims in countries where they cannot trust those in authority. Amen. Lord, such prayers give us heavy hearts, but we praise you and thank you that you have indeed heard our prayers and are even now answering them. On a lighter note, we pray for our benefits during the vacancy. Please help our precious ministry team in every way, giving them wisdom and discernment, health and energy as they help run the three churches. And we pray for all that is involved here. Even now, we ask that you are preparing our future vicar and prompting them to consider to coming to us. Bring the forthcoming advertisements to their attention and please protect the whole process of their appointment. Lord, you came to give us life and to do so, you had to lay down your life on the cross to bring us back to God. Help us to live this day as those who have been given the glorious liberty of the children of God and who want to live our lives in gratitude and joy. So make us ready for the day when all that is good is caught up in life in heaven and you, Lord Jesus, are all in all. Amen. And as our Lord taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Linda, and Amanda, and Ken, and all who have helped to put this together. We have our next song, Tell Out My Soul, and then I will close with a prayer.
and let us pray. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen. Glory to God, whose power at work among us can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for ever and ever. Amen. God bless you all and go with you into the coming week. Amen. <laughs>